Hello everyone, it's Lewis P here. I hope everyone's having an amazing day, night, wherever you are in the world. Today what we're actually going to be talking about is the Gary Kasparov Masterclass. And if you're interested in taking a class like this, you can click that link in the description. So today, this class isn't just the chess class. It's actually much more than that. And if you're into getting into esports, whether or not you're getting into uh, sports or you want to improve your professional career, this is a class that will actually help you with that. And I'll show you how. It's actually at the end of the at the Masterclass. Um, it's around, uh, where is it? It's around, oh, it's loading up. There we go. It's around here, right? Uh, analyzing, uh, it's using, you know, technology and mental toughness. These things are probably the best things, but we'll get to that at the end. So stay tuned to the end of this video to hear more about that and what I think and how it's applied to my life. <laughs> it's, it's actually quite insane. So now let's do this. Let's just do the quick overview. And as always, guys, no editing, no cuts. I know a lot of you guys appreciate this because you know it's raw and it's rare and it's basically truth and it's a, as though you're right next to me. So let's get into it. There are 29 classes. Um, now, each one of these classes are relevant to a certain demographic. So if you're into chess, obviously you're getting the most value from this and it's 100% buy. If you're getting it, 100% get it. Uh, it's super exclusive. If you're learning from Gary, who is a master and that has been a master for the last 50 years, 20 years, sorry, 50 to 40 years, he's an old dude. Think of um, the best, like Shroud. Think of Shroud plus 40 years. Think of Faker plus 40 years. Think of like, um, the best see, fraud plus 40 years. Oh, not that fraud plays much CS anymore. But think of those really, really top notch players. K Sharp plus 40 years with that experience behind their back. This, this was the video game back in the day. This was the biggest game. Um, this was the technical game that everyone played. Chess was it. But now you can apply these learnings to everything else, which is really, really cool. So let's get into it even more. So yeah, we have that. We have a class workbook. If you're not a chess player, this work will, will probably be irrelevant to you. If you are a chess player, this will give you a lot of value. Office hours, so basically there's a really cool community within the masterclass. So once you take the masterclass, you're actually learning from other people that are taking it as well. I've seen a lot of experts in this area. I'll actually log in right at the end and I'll show you what it's like, which is cool. So lesson plan, uh, I'll go through, I'm not gonna go through every single lesson because I know we don't have time for that and I probably can do a really in-depth analysis at a later date. So if you want that, let me know in the comments below. So let's do it. Uh, we have an introduction, boring. We talk about, well, it's actually not that boring when you think about it. It talks about his life and what he's into and how you know he was ambitious and growing up, which was cool. Chess fundamentals, you don't really need to know that. However, it's interesting to know how he thinks about the game and you can also apply that thinking to the game that you play, whether that's Dota 2, League of Legends, CS, Hon, PUBG, kinda. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's not that bad to listen how he reflects on that. Uh, there's also different types of game mechanics and this is actually very very similar to the world, the way games work as well so for example skewers i'm not going to go too into detail into these things but for example skewers uh the game geometry so if you've played uh wow at a high level in terms of arena or even pve uh, you know that geometry is everything if you played league of legends you'll know geometry is everything and when i say geometry i mean like your position relative to your opponents and the minions or the pve environment now, if you compare a like a faker, as in like the best players in the world versus the, the normal players like you and I, um, you'll notice that there's geometry that's very different. They're, they're playing a game in a very, they're not even playing the same game as us, even though they are. They're playing a very different type of game. They're playing the map, they're playing the, the minions, they're playing the opponent's reactions, they're playing the abilities, they're playing the different things. So it's all about positioning. That's essentially what he's saying here. And that's interesting to get his perspective on this. Very, very valuable uh, lesson this one is. Uh, you know, discovered attacks, we'll go into that. Pins, deflection, attack, uh, um, attraction, um, you know, attract your opponents in, you know, bait them in, like, you, you know, you, you bait to, because you know your jungle's coming, so you bait, you take a bit more extra damage, and then you execute, stuff like that. Really, really cool. Um, and then, like, uh, interference, you know, basically stunning opponents, if you will, you know, CCing them, in other words, overloading them, creating chaos, basically. Um, so that's really, really, that's basically one of my favorite things in video games to in, all together. It's just overloading them and putting, pinning them in an environment that it's so, it's so hard to get out of basically impossible. And he, you can, he has a really, really cool story. Um, Gary has an amazing story about how he was versing an opponent and he literally made his opponent because he, he just exploded. He did this amazing, like chaotic, uh, like move and his opponent jumped out of his chair quite literally. And then the next point, oh my, this just feeds into exactly what I'm saying about how this relates to video games and just any game for that matter. It's about winning trades ultimately, right? So if you've ever played League mid, you play Dota 2 mid, or you know, you're versing an opponent one-on-one, -on -one, you know how important trades are, right? Trades are super, 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 super important. And what that means is, 
like let's hypothetically say you're versing someone mid and then what happens is you're, you do an effective trade on them or they do one on you. That can literally mean the end of your game. Like not mean, but not mean the end, obviously, but it will give you such an advantage that it will help you through the mid and late game. So that was really cool. And this is really, really cool. The next part, end games, right? The reason most players lose in like games in general um, is that because they, they, they can't execute their end game. I've always been known as a player in the community that I play in is I'm an end game type of player. Notice how end game doesn't come, um, well, comes first relative to openings. So it's not just about the laning phase, guys. It's not just about opening. End game is much more important. And what he talks about is how we can show purity and creativity in the end game, including drama, you know, shouldering. I don't even know what that term is, but it's interesting. It's about playing that end game in the right way. And the two, I didn't really find a lot of value from that. I'm sure it would for other people. And then, um, this is uh, part three was really good in Endgame as well. Um, you know, miracles can happen, right? You know, you can make a comeback when you're down so far. Um, while most players spend their time on openings, you know, and that's true. A lot of players in games right now, they, they spend so much time just watching players and they just want to improve their openings. But it doesn't matter, right? The, the, the openings are important, but if you can nail down your end game, whether that's League, Dota 2, you're going to most likely win most games. Um, and it's all about just, you know, understanding how the end game works. Then there's openings. I mean, that's that's cool. That's interesting. Not that great for me. I've never made an opening player, but I'm sure a lot of you guys that really want to understand how improving your openings in games. And this is not from a chess perspective. Like you need to look at it. You need to apply this to the, the specific area that you're in. It's not like, oh, this is just a chess class. This is more than that. Um, this was amazing, this class actually. So I don't know if any of you know about rating systems. Basically, there's a rating system in any pro game. Like whenever there's a ladder, there's a rating system behind it. League of Legends has a rating system. Dota has a rating system. And they all go from around, I believe it starts at 500 and it goes to 3K. Obviously in different games, they've changed it because they wanna be smart asses, but don't worry, it, that's basically the, the proper rating system. And and you, that applies to WoW, that applies to League of Legends. I know Dota goes up to like 5K, which is, or 4K. That's just, I don't even know what they're trying to do there. It's weird. Um, but either way, so what he does is he versus three players at the same time at different rating systems, at rating, rating, rating skill caps. And, you know, there's a way that you can get a rating and by playing more games, you get your rating. So what happens is, let's apply this, right? So this is a grandmaster. Gary is a grandmaster. So I wrote down all the ratings um, that are in typical video games. So he versed a one, two, six, six, one, five, basically mid of the pack. And then he versed a, a decent player there, 2100. So let's go into, so one, 1300 here. So he versus a 1300, he versus a silver player, right? Think of Faker versing a silver player. Think of Shroud versing a player that's brand new to the game, right? And then you have uh, a 1500 play, rated player. So 1500 is gold, which isn't that bad. And then you have a 2100 rated player. 21 is just under diamond. He's high, he's high platinum, right? He versus these guys at the same time, right? And there's no like experience, like advantage where there's levels and stuff. He's like literally versing them on the exact same playing field at the exact same time with the exact same amount of time as each one of them. So that's, a, that's about a, a 40 minute video here and you just see the way he moves the way he's looking at them the way he's seeing the way they move it's so interesting to see this and he ultimately crushes all of them but at the end of it he's like listen you should have done this this and this and you're not looking at this this and this it, that was just really cool and then he goes through Jason the, the three players Jason Molly and Dennis as well so that was really good so let's get to the um the really 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 fun stuff the stuff that I found the most value with and this is what I, I was basically alluding to earlier saying just wait to the end so how to analyze now analyzing his perspective on analyzing taught me a lot of different things now some things that about this specific class was um being brutally brutally honest with yourself and not making excuses so that's one major thing like he says be relentlessly honest with yourself and the game you play don't say oh this happened because of this this and this and this i really just want to play this class for you because it's so valuable um and this is one of the major things that I didn't do back in the day was I always used to analyze my bad games. But what this class teaches you to do, what Gary teaches you to do is you should be analyzing your best games as well because your reality is you did make a mistake in those games and it's about improving them. And 
if you don't make a mis- if you don't analyze both your good and bad games, then you ultimately allow the opportunity for your opponents to get ahead and it provided they learn and they watch and they do when you're at the highest level of gameplay in anything that you do tennis anything like that your opponents are analyzing both your best games which obviously means probably you won against them and they're analyzing their best games but i never analyzed my best games so i think that was part of the reason that held me back yeah i only hit diamond i didn't hit challenger but analyzing my best games would have been a really really good thing i, I mean i hit gladiator but i was a low level gladiator player i wasn't the highest of the high which is annoying another point in this was um learn from the masters analyzing from the masters guys learn from the best players um in the world and let's hypothetically say you're a league player Learn from the guys that were playing in season two, three, four. It's season seven right now, season eight right now. Learn from those guys and watch the way they move. The best in the world, though. Watch the best of the best. And you'll see things. And ultimately, what that does is it, it, en- it enhances your creativity within the game. And he talks about how it makes you richer. Um, so that's really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, think of... Um, it's, that, was just, that was probably my, my favorite part of the, the entire course to be honest and then it talks about robots and chess so if you don't know gary was pretty much crushed by a i think it was a deep blue I, ibm built deep blue um similar to i think didn't google beat uh, i'm not sure what happened with um apparently i think it was facebook or amazon or one of those companies built like a, a dota 2 bot and ended up like crushing pro players because it knew how to move probably i forgot the company that did it if you know let me know in the comments but basically gary was crushed by this a uh, program called Deep Blue, um, which basically learned how to play chess the most optimal way, which is mind blowing. And, um, you know, obviously he's softened up a bit, you know, he hasn't taken it bad and too bad, right? So yeah, he talks about how technology can ultimately help players. So, and if you watch this documentary on Dota 2 and this AI bot that versus the Dota 2 players, they see how it ultimately helps them in improving because it makes them see mistakes that they never thought even existed. So. He talks about stuff like that and it applies so much to other other aspects. And then the last part I really just want to say is mental toughness. Mental toughness needs to be understood across the board. It's otherwise known as EQ, uh, emotional intelligence. You can Google this, by the way. Um, understanding how important it is when you're playing, um, you know, basically look at this, right? He's having one of the most grueling matches of his career and how he ultimately won and how he, well, I just gave it away. But if, if you understand, if you know this guy's history, then you'll know this. Um, he's having a, an amazingly difficult game and then ultimately recovered um, and, you know, got that emotional toughness back. He got that EQ back. He became, you know, centered, if you will. He took a step back and um, ultimately won because he was so emotionally secure with himself. So that was a really, 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 really good um class to take or you know video to take and highly recommend it so that's pretty i mean there's obviously a lot more to it um you know you can watch it on your browser all that stuff there's a lot more other classes as well so if you're interested in that otherwise um again guys if you're looking at looking at um actually getting this class and improving yourself whether that's esports gaming sports whatever you want um definitely check out the class click that link in the description i'll give it to you from eight dollars so you're welcome there uh, again, tell me if the all access class works in terms of the price. Let me know what price you have it at. Um, otherwise, if you like this content, guys, please provide feedback on it because this is the first time I've ever done a masterclass review on chess, but it's like a bit broader than that. And then, yeah, if you like to give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out. Uh, again, if you have any questions, I'm in the comments all the time. I have a notification on my phone, so I reply to literally every single comment you guys give me. So thank you very much for the comment. Give it a like. If you really liked it, give it a sub, all of that. I hope everyone's uh, having an amazing day. I hope you got some value from this class. Check it out. It's a definite winner in my books. Thank you very much.